In today's video, we'll discuss the signs on Jerry Turner's face that point to a strong will and a lost love in his past, as well as why I would encourage him to listen to his emotions and instincts regarding the women he engages while on The Golden Bachelor. Enjoy. Hey everybody, we've got Jerry Turner today. If you are new to my channel, please go to the description box, watch the five minute crash course video on face reading I made. It'll give you some terms and terminology. So again, if you're new, pause this, go watch that. And if you're liking my content, please like, subscribe, hit that bell notification, and share this with someone who you think might find this interesting. All right, so Jerry Turner, The Golden Bachelor. For the record, I don't watch this show. My wife does. I do, however, watch Bachelor in Paradise. Don't judge me. It's my wife's fault. She made me watch it, and now I've started and I can't stop. But anyway, let's talk about Jerry Turner's features. So a couple of things. Wood-shaped face. Consistent theme with my readings as of late. People with a rectangular-shaped face also got a pretty strong jaw. So this is like two wood features, two wood energetics coming to the front line. So that relates to organization, structure. It's the general archetype. It's about our dreams, pursuing our dreams, and also having a certain command, a certain level of authority in our social circles, in our work environments. So he's got this. I don't know what he does for work or what he's done, but he's got one of those faces that could technically go into politics, go into something where he's got some authority and can kind of throw his his ideas around and have them be taken seriously. So he's also got a big square broad forehead, which is indicative of an open mind. And for a guy going into a show like this, that's pretty relevant. You're going to be talking to a lot of different women, doing a lot of different things. You have to be open-minded to begin with. So that's a favorable trait in the context of his current life terrain and what he's doing. Now, he also has joy lines, these lines that show up right here. My, my late teacher, Lillian Bridges, didn't like the term crow's feet. She said they're joy lines. And she said the way to think about these lines are sort of like joyful experiences being squeezed and extracted from life. It's a very favorable good thing. And he's got these, which means a joyous nature. He's likely enjoying his life, enjoying his family, enjoying his friends, and enjoying his experiences. So again, this is a favorable or auspicious marker in the context of face reading. Now, he's also got fire eyes. So the lighter the color of the eyes, the more aligned with the fire element they are. So you can think of this, the metal and fire elements have lighter colored eyes. And when we get into the wood element, the earth element, and the water element, darker eyes. And so he has these wood features, the rectangle face, the square jaw right here with fire eyes. And that is a creative cycle in the five element theory. So fire, earth, metal, water, and wood. When I say them in that order, that is the creative cycle. Fire promotes earth, earth promotes metal, metal promotes water, water promotes wood, and wood promotes fire. And so goes the cycle over and over. And there's also a destructive cycle. So when you have wood features with fire eyes, that's a creative cycle. And all that really means in the general life terrain means that your life flow, your life current, your life force should move a bit easier because you have a creative elemental cycle on your face. So that's just sort of a good luck marker. It's like a, it's a good thing. You know, it's not a bad thing at all. So he's got that. He's also got a strong chin. So if we draw a line from the outer edges of the lips down and that distance in that space right there, that geography, the more dominant and more prominent that is, the size of that, the more the water element is active. And so what that relates to specifically is willpower. So there's a saying in the East, and Buddhism says it as well, life is suffering. And life is very difficult and it requires a sizable amount of will, either inborn or cultivated, to get through life with any amount of, you know, if you want to get through life and have it be relatively good, you're going to need a strong willpower. And again, you either need to be born with it or cultivate it. He's got a pretty strong chin. So good willpower. And I would, you know, these are the things I obviously I can't check in with the person because I'm not live with them reading, but these are the things I would be asking and asking, what's your relationship to strongly willed people, your personal will? How, how well do you do in that area? And then I always ask people questions because I can learn from them too. Like, you know, what do you do to cultivate that? Or is it inborn and how has that served you? So he's also got um, a bottom heavy face. So in my recent video I did last week of Jeffrey Epstein, his proportions are actually the same to Jerry. That doesn't mean they're the same people. It just means their proportions are the same. And these proportions on Jeffrey Epstein's face, his personality, not good because of the emotional manipulation and blackmailing that he was involved in. But with a guy like this, which a much warmer Shen, much friendlier disposition, you can just tell through his features and through his interviews, he's a nice guy. He very much appears to be a nice guy. But three areas from the hairline 
to the eyebrows. This distance, the greater that distance, the more dominant the mental sphere. If you're wondering too, for people with shaved heads, if you wrinkle the forehead, you can see the texture change right here. When the head is shaved, use that tissue change right there. When it changes from wrinkles to the, that's the hairline for people with shaved heads. And if people have hair, just use the hairline they have. But if their hairline has receded, do this thing that I'm doing right here and find where the tissues change, that's the hairline. So mental sphere, from the eyebrows to the bottom of the nose, pragmatism and practicality, from the bottom of the nose to the chin, emotions and instincts, emotionality and instincts. If Jerry were my client and he said, hey, Gray, I'm going on to the Golden Bachelor, any tidbits, you know, according to my face that I should like lean into, I would say, trust your gut. Go with your emotional response and instinctual responses to these women. Don't worry about pragmatism too much. Yeah, you can sift some things with your mental sphere and have some good conversations, but focus on your emotions and your instincts to trust and to know, you know, whether to move forward with these women. Yes, we can all do that. Yes, that's viable to a certain degree for everybody. But when your face has dominant zones like this, all that means is that's going to be even more true for someone like you more often than not. So I don't know how he's approaching this. If anyone knows in the comments, if he's voiced that, like what he's doing and how he's approaching that, let me know. Put them in the comment box. Now, let's talk about some of his leaks. Minor things. Nothing to write home about, but things that I would be a little concerned. He's got sparse eyebrows. That's a wood feature, and he's got other strong wood features, but this is a little sparse. That can happen, they can be sparse through a healing crisis, something really taxing to the physical body, something like chemo, or if we're having hormonal dysregulation, thyroid problems, we'll see a, this getting sparse. So maybe he was born like this, I don't know, but when I see the eyebrows a little sparse, I would be inquiring, what's going on? Have you had any very intense healing crises? Are you having thyroid problems? But on an emotional level too, when these are sparse, that means that person with sparse eyebrows should not get into highly contentious, volatile arguments. And yes, anger and engaging anger is hard on the body for any person. But again, when the eyebrows are sparse, it means like you don't have the fuel or the range, the dynamic range to get into those spaces and have it be a good thing for you. Some people like me, I have a little bit thicker eyebrows. I need a little more small conflict consistent conflicts. For someone like this, he can kind of let those little conflicts go. Don't suppress them. Don't repress them. But when they're sparse, that means like don't overuse anger. Someone like me, unfortunately, I can overuse anger and it's not going to be that big of a taxation. For someone like him, less so. Okay, so the eyebrows. He's also got a prominent feature that I noticed right away when I started zooming in on his face. He's got something called lost love lines, which are these lines that show up from the inner canthus of the eye and they move diagonally towards the nose. And the thinking is, with wrinkles in general, the more deeply they're carved, the more ingrained the emotional pattern and the habit, like the duration of time that the person has been engaging it. So he has these and they were pretty strong. I thought, damn, you know, that's, I haven't seen lost love lines like that in quite a while. So because I distance myself from the psychic predictive fortune telling 900 number vibe that can people can fall prey to if they watch something like this. That's not what this is. That's not what I'm going for. So what I did was though, I went online and I started looking at YouTube videos and I was like, let me just hear what he talks about and see if I can find anything. And sure enough, unfortunately, he lost his wife of 40 plus years in 2017. Sad story. He apparently took her in to the hospital and within, within a week she had passed from some kind of bacterial infection that had gotten into her kidneys and some other organs. And so lost love lines. I thought, damn, the theory does link up. And every person that has these lines, have they had some emotional loss? Not necessarily, but a lot of times it does link up. And this is one such instance. And so you want to think when we see these wrinkles, it's like, okay, so what? Yes, his face says that he has a lost love. He could have just told you that. So, so now what? All that really means when we see it on the face is that it's it's been ingrained into the emotional terrain of the person and we want those emotions to be a bit more temporal. Emotions, according to the East, should come and go. Even joy should come and go. The only emotion that we should consistently engage for the greatest longevity in life is peace. Peace, stillness, like tranquil, cool water. That's the emotion that we should always kind of come back to if we want to live a long time. So when you see these, it just means that, you know, that sorrow, that grief, that lost love has been dug in. And hopefully, given where he is, I really hope that he's able to find, you know, find love here because that would be pretty cool given his history with that. The last little leak I saw was this line that shows up right here, which is the, this is like the uh, dietary terrain component. And it happens usually in three ways, either not eating enough like undereating, overeating or eating your emotions, emotional eating, or you hate the food that you are eating. Quick side note, 
The East says that the more you enjoy your food, the better your digestion. And there's a growing body of research that, that is supporting that saying, you know, don't eat when you're angry. That's one. But um, the physiological function of your digestion is impacted negatively when we are in negative emotional states. So I would be asking him about that line, checking in a bit. Lastly, his public persona, natural face, and inner persona. His natural face and his public persona look pretty similar. And so what that kind of means is, is that people, when they approach him, are going to see the person that they meet, you know, his natural face, but they're going to see that public persona side a bit more. It's wider featured, dominant, kind of looks like a movie star. So he's likely very approachable. My guess is if you meet this guy, very friendly, very down to earth, very open. And then in getting to know him, if you were to get into a relationship, you would start to see this wood character, the inner persona side a bit more. Narrower feature, which means more organization and structure, but none of his faces make me nervous. The shin that comes out of each face seems grounded and friendly. So that's what I've got to say about Jerry Turner. If you guys have questions, let me know. Commentary about anything. If there's any kind of link-ups that are like accurate, let me know. And if there's someone else you'd like me to read, please let me know. Take care.